Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, seeing you here, and I pray that you're having a marvelous day, a marvelous God first day, a day that is filled with victory. Now, I want to read something to you, and I want to show you something uh, that you've done, that we've done together, that has made me proud, and I want to encourage you to do even more if you can and if you will. The Bible says this, and our Lord Jesus was talking in John. John's Gospel, chapter number 15 and verse 19. Well, why don't I read 18 and 19 to you? Our Lord said this, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus is talking here. He says, if the world hate you, know that it hated. He says, you know that it hated me before it hated, hated you. And then the next verse, it says, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hate you. And notice what our Lord said in verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would love, the world would love his own. The world would love his own his own. The world would love his own. What a powerful, powerful statement. The world loves his own. And many Christians today are being persecuted. Some are being prosecuted because uh, we're not of the world. And there's pressure on us to conform and to be just like the world. But I'm glad today that our God is a keeper. John chapter four and verse five says, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them. Now as Christians, we are not of this world. We're in the world and God's going to keep us in the world, but we're not of the world. Now I spoke to you just a few days ago and in some of my recent messages about a man whom I don't know personally. I've spoken to one time on the phone, but he's a hero of mine. And the man that I'm speaking of is Mr. Jack Phillips. Jack Phillips is a Christian warrior, in my opinion, if there uh, has ever been one. And believers, he's been singled out by the world. They have singled him out to try and pick on him. You know, he's the baker up in the Denver area. He's the baker who uh, refused a few years ago to bake a, uh, a homosexual cake. As a matter of fact, he's written a book, The Cost of My Faith, How a Decision in My Cake Shop Took Me to the Supreme Court. The man's a Christian, and I won't go into it because I've talked about it before. He's a Christian, and he just refused to make a same-sex marriage wedding cake, two men kissing each other. And uh, uh, there were other, there were other uh, bakeries in, in the area, down the street, around the corner, who, would, who were ready, willing, and able to make the cake. But no, they wanted to make an example out of this man. He prevailed, and of late, he's been attacked again because there's a man uh, who is going through the change. This guy is trying to turn himself into a woman. It won't happen. It can't happen. He can mutilate himself. You can cut off this and, and, and add that. But I want to tell you, you'll never be a woman. You, go, you are who God made you. We've, we've, we've come up with ridiculous terms, the biological male and the biological female, as though there are any other kind. No, we are who, who our creator made us to be. And what we need to do is, is to help people understand that. That was a time when everybody did. But of course, I guess now there are major uh, spirits of deception that have been released in the land. Now, back to my point about this mighty warrior whom I thank God for. Got a chance to speak to over the phone and sowed a seed into his ministry because I saw him on one of the news networks as he's fighting because as this man is going through the change, he wants 
of all people, Jack Phillips, to bake a transition cake. Now, he knows that Jack is not going to bake a transition cake. It's, it's designed to, to, to get Jack back into court, to drive it down his throat, to make him capitulate, make him, oh, my, acquiesce, make him just swallow the rhetoric and the wickedness that they're trying to sell. Jack responded to our uh, 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 gift, our, our reaching out to him. He sent me a copy of his book. I want, I want to bring it before you, uh, The Cost of My Faith. I pray that you would order this book. It's on the Salem books. Get it. Support the man of God. And, uh, and also, he sent me two mugs. He sent me two mugs. And if you can see, I, I'm letting you see... Uh, the insignia that's written on uh, either side, and uh, his his actually the scripture that he uses uh, is Ephesians chapter two verse ten, and you find out that that the Bible was a part of even his naming his bu his business. It says he has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do good things. As a matter of fact, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do good things. He planned, do the good things that he planned for us a long time ago. Now, if I read this same passage uh, in the King James version of the Bible, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse uh, uh, at verse 10, it says this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The, the fact is that this man, this man has even the name of his business is taken from scripture. I pray that you look up this business uh, uh, masterpiece cake shop up there in the Denver area, Masterpiece Cake Shop. I'm talking to the believers now. Give them a call. Uh, send them a blessing. Send, send them some support. Hey, order uh, 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 the product. Oh, and by the way, in the, the cups, there were two samples of his uh, artistry and uh, his ability to bake. And they were some of the best cookies, my friends, that I've ever had. And uh, unfortunately, they're gone because once, once I took a bite of one, I couldn't put them down. And then I was here at the church and some of the uh, adjutants and the elders and the uh, armor bearers were, were hanging around. And I said, hey, guys, do you want to taste these cookies? And I'll tell you the truth. Everybody, everybody loved them. So I see why Jack is so popular and why he's, he's so good at what he does, because his food, his, his product is number one. So I'm asking the believers now. Mr. Phillips don't know me, and I really don't know him. We talked for a few moments, and he told me if he's ever in the Raleigh area, he would swing by to see us. And I don't think it's necessary for us to have to know each other any more than we already do, already know uh, uh, each other. I know this. He's a born-again believer. I know this. The world has singled him out. And I refuse, I refuse uh, to be uh, like they were when Uriah was on the battlefield, placed on the battlefield, fighting against the enemy, and he didn't know that he had delivered a note, and the instructions was, were for him to be left out there to fight by himself. The world knows how to fight. The world knows how to gang up on us. The world knows how to shut us down and to shut us up. Too many Christians have lost, lost the ability to fight, the, lost the ability to get involved. We, are, we become first class self-preservationists. And so if they're not coming after us, then, then we're not going to say a thing like they won't eventually get to us. So I pray that you would pray for Brother Phillips. I pray that you would pray for Masterpiece Cake Shop. And I pray that you'd give them a call. And I pray that you would send them an offering and, and support this great work. And do it 
eat whether you like you, you like bake <laughs> like cakes and cookies and most people I know do but whether you like them or not that's not the point the point is are we going going to stand idly by and allow the world to just come in and rob us of all of our rights the world the left the wicked the lgbtq plus community are we going to allow them to just beat us down and beat us into compliance and make us do whatever they want us to do and all we're supposed to do is tuck our tail between our legs and just go along with it the devil is a liar I still believe in something that's called righteous indignation. I know that God have not given us the spirit of fear, praise the Lord, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I want you to get in touch with Jack and I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm fired up. I can hardly wait to teach the word of God tonight. And I tell you what, just as last Thursday night we talked about God restoring and the Lord moved my friends in a mighty way and the Lord is doing just that. I There's a word from the Lord for me to share with you, oh my, on tonight. I can hardly wait to teach it and uh, I want you to join me. If you can't get here live, join me on YouTube live, Facebook live. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. You all are fantastic. And I thank you for all of the things, the, the cards, the letters, the, the gestures of support. A dear friend of mine from Louisiana called the other day and said, Bishop, I, I want to send an offering. And maybe there's someone in the church who needs a blessing, who needs help. I just want to send something. God placed it on my heart to be a blessing. And I want you to know that, that, that we took that offering and, uh, and we sold it into, a life, uh, into the life of a young lady who is a warrior for Jesus Christ, but she's surrounded. She's surrounded by worldly folk spewing worldly hatred. And here's a young lady who's standing on a college campus, standing alone, and they're trying to, to put anger, rage, hatred, racism, and all that kind of stuff in her and she refuses to buy that rhetoric. She, she believes that the God of the Bible made all people and that God told us that we're to love everyone. And so because she won't buy that mess and hate people due to the color of their skin, uh, she's surrounded. But we're sending her that blessing just to encourage her heart and to let her know that she's not alone. It's the kind of audience that we have. That's the kind of audience that you are. And thank you so much. Thank you for your financial gifts. Thank you for your prayers. Nothing beats prayer. Thank you for standing your ground and the words of encouragement. I've had people to tell me, Bishop Wooden, whatever you do, don't change. Keep preaching the unadulterated, unadulterated word of God. Don't apologize for preaching the truth. Don't apologize for standing on God's word. And I promise you, my friends, with your prayers and the help of the God of the Bible, I'll do just that. So join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yes, Bible study. We are going to study the word of the Lord together. Now may God's choice blessings be yours and you make it a fantastic day. See you tonight.